What's going on guys, Sledgehammer70 here, and it is time to take a drive. Now today, I wanna to talk about a specific subject, and let's get this bad boy started and get going. So, <clears throat> on today's Drive with Lethal, I would like to talk about the modding possibilities or the upgrade possibilities that you can do with both the LT and the SS, and even the future 1LE and ZL1s. Now, there are a lot of Camaro enthusiasts and car enthusiasts going around um, talking about how the new 6th gen Camaro with basically bolt-on mods, the cost of those mods doesn't necessarily warrant um, the increase. And uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. Now, a lot of these guys are saying you have to have a tune, you have to go force induction, you have to do all that stuff to make the gains worthwhile for the cost. And again, I don't know how true that is because let's take a step back. So, and this goes a little bit deeper because a lot of people feel, I mean, there's naysayers out there that say cold air intakes don't do anything to the motor and it's a sham and why would you waste your money on it? And, you know, there's people out there that believe that, there's people out there that don't believe that. Um, and then there's the actual proof in the dyno sheets and the performance sheets of how a car performs uh, with these added mods on there. And it goes beyond the cold air intake. It goes, you know, uh, ported throttle body. It goes ported intakes or even in better intakes, manifolds, that is, full exhaust, headers, etc. Now, many of us know that if you do all this stuff, there is gains. There is proof that there's dynos that show 25, 30, 40, 50 horsepower gains to the wheels. So it's obviously more than that. Um, increase and you know you if you go with a full gamut of upgrades you're talking pretty close five maybe six thousand dollars if you go full headers full exhaust cold air intake intake manifold a tune a bladed or a ported throttle body um, all that stuff so and it's true it gets pretty expensive uh, pretty quickly and um, but you you don't really run the risk of really messing up your motor too much and let me caveat that like force induction um or for putting force induction on a motor that's not built for it will cause problems over time yes you can go to a reputable shop get a great product it's going to last you many years if you take care of it and I don't wanna knock that. I'm not personally a fan of forced induction, um, but with that being stated, the biggest reason for me is everyone that I know that boosts their car, supercharges their car, their biggest remark is don't do it to your daily driver. And there's plenty of guys out there that have daily drivers, that have superchargers, have turbochargers, they have no problems whatsoever. So and then again, it's split in half, right? Like. How do you know what to trust? How do you know what to do? And it really, it's it's a chance. You're taking a chance no matter what you do. And, you know, is that chance worth it? Is that horsepower worth it? Now, when you go down the road of just bolt-on mods, you are limited on the peak performance that you can create. I mean, it, it's gonna come down to the quality of products you buy. It's gonna come down to the, the quality of tune that you apply to your vehicle because in the long run, if you're putting bolt-ons on and you don't tune your vehicle, you're you're leaving gains on the table. Because there's a lot of products out there that do provide gains, but they're in the upper RPM range, but they actually penalize you in this sixth gen in the lower RPM range. So you're actually, the RPM range that you're usually cruising around with or taking off from the line, um, unfortunately, if you don't tune your vehicle, you're, lo you're leaving that on the table. Now, that comes into a bigger conversation, warranty. Now, GM has taken the strides, both of the Corvette and the Camaro, and even somewhat with the, uh, the sedan SS, in a sense, that um, you, can, uh, you can upgrade your vehicle and retain the warranty. There are different items out there, such as cold air intakes from GM, 
there's suspension parts, there's exhaust, um, they're even uh, supposedly with the 16 Camaro cold air intake from GM, they're going to offer a tune of some sort. And that tune is supposed to level out your vehicle so it's not running lean and you get a good performance boost across the board. Now, whether that's true or not is to remain to be seen because GM has been basically sandbagging their cold air intake for a while now. And uh, it's just, it's kind of been unfortunate because a lot of us have been waiting for it. We want to see what the performance increase is there. Everyone is pretty much assuming that they license the technology from cold air induction. So, but going back to warranty, you know, going force induction, you're basically going to go with a system that's going to take over your warranty. So you're going to go with a Pro Charger or Edelbrock or any of the big companies out there that make a product that's good and will give you a powertrain warranty on your vehicle of so many miles, so many years. Now, how all of those ones work out, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know how many people have gone through the ringer of, hey, I had a problem or my motor blew up because I put your supercharger on it you know, what what that warranty coverage looked like or how that outcome played out. Now, going with bolt-ons, you can still void your warranty. Um, you know, and people are gonna throw out, oh, there's laws that allow you to do things and blah, 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 blah. But you know what? When it comes down to GM, it's up to your dealer and GM to say, you know what? The warranty void or warranty is good. There's nothing that states putting a cold air intake on your vehicle will be warrantied if it's not a product made by GM. Same with headers, same with exhaust, same with catch cans, same with everything. Anything that you claim performance is bound to potentially be thrown out the door and GM says they don't honor your warranty anymore. Now, there's plenty of dealerships out there that will tell you in writing that you could do cold air intakes, you could do exhaust beyond the cats. Um, catalytic converters that is um, and still be good in California there's laws supposedly that state that you can adjust your anything beyond the combustion so headers high flow cats exhaust all that stuff but if GM wants to they can make you prove it in court you know they can deny you until they get a court order saying they have to fix it um, and it, it it is on them to prove that you know, whatever you did to your vehicles, what caused whatever failure could happen. But do you have the time and resources to be able to go through that? I don't know. I know I don't. Um, so you have, to, you have to be careful. You know, you got to be careful with the dealer you're working with. And especially then, you know, if you're going to put mods on your car, you almost have to just consider you're never going to the dealer again because there's a good chance that your car goes in for repair. They look at it for whatever reason and be like, oh, there's headers on this car. Oh, there's this on this car. And they make note under your car's VIN number or account. And they have that as history. And you have to deal with that if you ever have a problem. Um, and in most cases, guys who do things to their car, they just work with a performance shop to see, okay, what's the problem if there is one. And they, they go from there, you know, and if let the performance shop fix it. So then if anything catastrophic happens, I mean, I've seen people even go to the point where they had a problem, they rip off all their mods, put it back to stock and bring it into the dealership. Now, I that seems really shady to me and kind of unfair. And I know GM has to deal with people that do that and it's unfortunate, but you know, it is what it is. So mods and upgrades and warranties. I mean, there's, there's a lot to it. Now, for me, I'm going on with the simple bolt-ons that are not necessarily going to void my warranty, at least up front. And mainly I'm going down the path of slowly upgrading my car and slowly testing things to be able to provide more videos and more content for you guys so you guys can see if it's worthwhile going down the paths that I'm checking out. So I have a lot of parts and pieces sitting in my garage that I want to put on my car and I want to test but I can't because I want to do other things first. And if I do other thing, or if I just jump to the items I have, it makes it impossible, impossible for me to test stock settings to prove out small gains or increased gains across the board by doing things like such as porting the stock intake manifold or porting the stock tri-y headers or encoding them. 
you know, does that provide any sort of performance gain over just buying a set of shorty or long tube headers? Now, I'm in California, so I'm limited on what I can even do. Um, you know, technically long tube headers are illegal out here. Um, as much as I love the sound that they bring, um, I run the risk of getting pulled over and getting a citation and having to go get my vehicle smogged. Um, and that's always a nightmare. It always takes a lot of time. And you know what, time, time's precious to a lot of people. Um, I know I work a lot, I got a family, and going to spend a half day at a smog shop does not sound all that amazing to me. Now, I would love to move out of this stupid state of California because I just think all the rules are a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, it protects the environment, but you know what? Like, I, I'm i not saying I uh, disagree with it. I'm just saying I, just, I disagree with it. <laughs> I don't even know. I just hate California and their stupid, crazy laws. It drives me nuts that people in Texas or other states can do all sorts of things to their vehicles and have no repercussions. But, you know, me putting headers on and still keeping my cats in place is against the law. So it's, yeah, whatever. And now I've lost my complete train of thought. Um, so just, uh, you know, for my, my, route that I'm going down, I guess I can outline for you guys is I'm doing a lot of things in hopes to help you guys and hopes to help give you guys some sort of idea of what you're getting for the money you're spending. Now I am planning to go to the dyno this Monday. Um, what is that? I don't know. I don't know the day. It's the uh, 27, maybe 27. Um, you know, during my lunch break, it's going to take a little bit longer, but I'm planning on doing some work while they're messing with the car, uh, bring my laptop and portable wireless internet, um, and let them go at it and test the car with the stock intake. Cause I've yet to dyno this car stock since I've gotten it. I dynoed my old car, but that car has been replaced with this one. I have not dynoed this one stock, so I don't know what the numbers are, but the plan is, is to dyno this car stock dyno it with a cold air inductions intake, dyno it with a Mishimoto intake, and then I also want to try to do a dyno with the stock setting with removing the cats. So if you remember, I did a video with high flow cats. I would like to see if we can swap those out while we're there, just to do quick testing to see how it sounds, and then also see what the performance gains or not gains are. Um, from there, my next set of testing would be with the stainless steel works full cat back exhaust system. So you guys may have saw my unboxing video. Next coming up is my install video, but I would like to see how that increases the performance of the car, but potentially even the sound. And that's where a lot of my mods are coming into place. I, yeah, performance is great. I would love for performance, but I know I'm not going to be the fastest Gen 6 Camaro or car on the road. That's not my that's not my drive with my build with this Camaro. Um, yes, it's got a big old burly V8, and yes, you could do a lot of things with it. And yes, a lot of the things I'm buying do give you an increase in power. But my goal is just to get a better sounding, nice, clean looking car. That is my that is my premise for this build. Um, I think it's going along pretty well so far. It is taking a lot longer to do things that I want, but it's happening. Slowly but surely, I'm having to save my pennies just like you guys to be able to afford things. Luckily, I mean, I'm just being honest and open with you guys, some of the ads ran on YouTube have made the channel a couple hundred dollars. Not much, but you know what? It's made it, it's made me allow, it allowed me to be able to buy my stainless uh, steelworks intake a little bit faster. And that's because of you guys. So thank you for watching the videos. Thanks for liking and sharing and commenting. It all helps, um, but it just allows me to get things a little bit quicker because you know, I'm, I'm on a set budget. I, I only have so much extra money every month and some of that goes into savings. Some of that goes to taking kids out and being with my family. And you know, I set aside some dollars, you know, for car parts or whatever I'm aiming to buy at that time. So. Oh, I'm just rambling in time. I'm sorry. This is a longer video and I appreciate you guys sticking through it this long, but um, Also, I'm trying a new thing. I got a couple extra GoPros that are on loan um, And I'm trying uh, different angles So I'm gonna slice some of those in if you've already seen it already and see how it pans out Let me know what you guys think there, but you know again, so <clears throat> I'm testing the cold air intakes I really want to get an AFE. I really want to get a GM performance intake. I hear those are coming in August 
Um, they're just finishing up with the 50 state, 50 state smog legal approvals, um, basically getting their carb legal certificate for all states. And I want to test those. I, and also the uh, Rotofab um, cold air intake. Like I'm saving my pennies to buy one of those because honestly, I feel the Rotofab setup is one of the best looking ones thus far. It reminds me a lot of the Z28 um, intake that GM had on the 2000 uh, or on the Gen 5s. But, um, you know, they're, they're claiming they have the best performance intake. I'd love to check it out and compare it to the other ones. And this car is totally not driving in their lane. So, but the other things, obviously exhaust, I'm gonna go down the road of the ported intake and the ported, um, ported encoded headers. Um, and then from there, you know, I'm gonna just stick with what I got, you know? So I already have the ported throttle body in there. In, in my testing, I'm gonna take that off just to get exact numbers of what a cold air intake's gonna do. And it's all gonna be without tuning up front. But once I get my car dialed in, um, in regards to what cold air intake I feel that I like the most, what what intake manifold is gonna work out better, what um, header setup, whether it's ported. Um, and mainly I'm going down the road of ported intake, ported headers, because those are stock items and I don't believe those that those changes will void my warranty. Um, so I'm gonna go down that route to see if, hey, if there is an increase and I can save myself a thousand bucks and spend only a couple hundred bucks, um, that would be ideal. So stick with me here. I know I know a lot of you guys have been uh, following the channel because you're really interested to see how some of the performance is. Again, I was traveling a lot last week and the week before, so I wasn't able to get down to the dyno results since I've had the two intakes, but I am gonna get to that this week or this coming week and post those results, videos, etc. cetera. Um, and it's not just gonna be like, oh, hey, I dynoed it. I'm gonna see if I can get the full numbers. Like, what is actually happening to the um, mass airflow sensor? What are the readings? Is it above normal? Is it just because we're forcing so much more air in and it's causing everything to run lean and that's where the power's coming from? I wanna get to the nitty gritty. I wanna find out exactly what is causing the power gains and you know where can it be improved. Uh, and hopefully we can get that data because um, I know they can get that data from the ECU. So we'll hook it up and get it. video for today hopefully um, you know I, I talked about a lot of different things force induction I've talked about mods is it worth it I guess I can I guess I could just conclude that you know I think the cost of the mods of just bolt-ons for me are worthwhile and I don't want to go down the road of force induction just because of the potential issues that can go down there now I say that but I would really love to one day bore out and cam this car. Get a slightly more aggressive sounding vehicle, probably go up to like a 427 um, and with the uh, the pistons, and um, or at least with the cubic inch and boring it out, but uh, and see what that does. I've seen some pretty crazy things happening with Corvette uh, Stingrays, where basically doing just that, camming a tune and boring it out, and going with some slightly bigger pistons, they're basically creating cars that are outperforming the Z06. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that's an expensive route to go. Hopefully, uh, you know, this is things that I would do down the road once my warranty is expired on the vehicle. But, um, you know, that would be like the really fun and cool, interesting uh, project, right? And I've already talked with a couple shops about it, got an idea on price, it's not cheap. So I would almost rather just not spend that money and just go buy a ZL1 than go down that road. But we'll see. Could be just a fun project or potentially even trying to find a shell of an old 69 or something and build that out. Because that would be a really cool thing to do, I think, for the channel and something I've always wanted to do with my, uh, with my sons. Like, my, like if my kids would like to build a car or learn all aspects of a vehicle, 
I'd like to go down that road and I would like to vlog about it and talk about it and show the process of getting the car and getting it all cleaned up and getting all original parts and then going down the road of pro touring it out, putting a modern day suspension and brakes and motor and all that stuff. So yeah. So as always guys, I said this earlier, but thanks for watching the videos. Thanks for sticking through. Thanks for chiming in comments, likes, shares channels just growing like crazy we're at 5,500 subscribers over 1.5 million video views you guys are freaking awesome it's all because of you guys and you know and I mentioned a little bit earlier as well that because of some of the ads running on the videos I have made a couple hundred bucks and I've been able to apply that to some of the mods and upgrades and I'm hoping I could be able to give some of that back um, I want to do some giveaways on some cleaning products that I've gotten um, or actually I should say that I purchased but they were free with some purchases and then I also want to do giveaways of the intakes that I'm just not going to be using. So I'm going to be buying the AFE. I'm going to be buying the Rotofab. Um, I have a gift certificate from GM from all my woes on my first car that will allow me to buy the GM intake. So whatever one I end up keeping, I'll run. But all the other ones, regardless if they're better or worse or however I decide that out, um, I'm going to give them away. Yes, they will be used. They will have been tested and etc. But you know what? I, I think you guys can get over that. Um, I think you guys would just be excited to kind of get something for free. And I think it'd be cool to give back to you guys because you guys have given me so much and be able to create this channel and stuff. And uh, I appreciate it. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching the videos and I will see you on the road.